Hello everyone, this is Vaseem from Edureka and I welcome you all to this session where I will be talking about tuple in Python. So without wasting any more time, let's take a look at the agenda for this session. So first of all, I will start with what exactly is a tuple and then I will talk about accessing and changing elements in a tuple. Moving further, I will discuss the tuple methods and various other examples. And after this, I will tell you the difference between a list and a tuple. And finally, to end this session, I will discuss tuple constructor and a few other examples as well. I hope you guys are clear with the agenda. So without wasting any more time, let's understand what exactly is a tuple in Python. A tuple is an immutable data type in Python and it is almost similar to a list in Python in terms of indexing, which means we can access the elements of a tuple using indexes and they can also have duplicate members just like a list as well. And it is a collection data type that stores Python objects separated by commas and let me show you an example which will explain how we can create or declare a tuple in Python. So let's take it up to Jupyter Notebook guys. As you can see now we are in the Jupyter Notebook and I have a file named tuple in Python over here. So I'll just show you how you can declare a tuple in Python. So I'll just take a variable here and inside this let me get a few values inside round brackets. So I'll just go with one, two, three, four, and 5 because this is a very basic example guys. And when I print a over here, this is my tuple guys, which is separated by commas and inside the round brackets. But there is one more approach to this where you can actually declare a tuple like this. So you simply have to mention some values separated by commas. And when I print a again, I'm getting the same value as I was getting before. So I can follow both of these approaches to actually declare a tuple in Python. So this is how we can create a tuple in Python. Let's take a look at the next topic that we have, which is accessing elements in a tuple. So accessing items in a tuple works similar to a list and we can access elements in a list using indexes and we can specify the index value and it will return the item that is stored at the particular index value. Now talking about indexing, it is a data structure technique to effectively retrieve the information from a data structure. And in Python, several data types support indexing like list, a string, etc. So what happens is, Let's see for example, we have a tuple with five natural numbers that have one, two, three, four and five. So the indexing will start at the value zero where one will be stored and it will go until the end of the tuple that is the number five and the index value at number five will be four. So in Python, we can use the negative indexing as well to access elements in a tuple or any other data type that supports indexing. So let me take it up to Jupyter Notebook guys and I'll show you how you can use the index values to access elements in a tuple. So we have a over here. So inside the square brackets, I'll just specify the index number. Let's say four over here because we have five elements. So it should ideally, you know, give me the value number five. Okay, I have an index error which says index out of range because we have only three values over here. So I'll be getting to this also like reassigning the values to a tuple. So I'll just write two. Now I'm getting the value 30 over here because in my tuple, that is the variable a, we have values 10, 20 and 30. So the index number at 10 will be zero. So similarly at the element number 30, we'll have the index value as two. So we're getting this output. Now talking about negative indexing. So if I write minus one over here, what will be the value I should be getting? I'm getting the same value as 30. So when we talk about negative indexing, it will start with 30. So the negative index minus one will be at 30 and for 20, it will be minus two and similarly minus three. So this is all about negative indexing. Now let me talk about slicing guys. So slicing is basically a technique in which we use the slicing operator, which is colon and it is used to get a range of elements from a tuple or any other data type that supports indexing for accessing elements. So let me just show you an example. This time I want the variable to be distinct and I'll just specify the numbers as let's say, okay, these numbers from one to nine. So when I print this, I have a tuple which has values ranging from one to nine. Now talking about slicing, it works similar to indexing only. It's just that we'll have to add that slicing operator. So I'll start at the index number, okay, zero. And then I want to go until the end of the tuple. So when I print this, I'm getting all the values inside the tuple. So in this tuple, the ending index is basically eight. So I'll just write eight over here and we are getting the values until the index number eight. So you can see that number nine is not included here. So when you are doing a slicing operation, 
the index number that you write after the slicing operator will not be included in the output. Similarly, we can use the negative indexes as well. I'm getting the same values and I can use values like these also. So I'll just write minus eight. The output is the same. So this is all about slicing guys. Now let's take a look at the next topic that we have, which is changing a tuple. So even though tuples are immutable in nature, but a nested object in a tuple can be changed or in general, a tuple in Python can be reassigned with a different value. So I'll just show you the example how we can do that. So talking about the Python nested objects, let's say I have a tuple which has values 10, 20, 30 and inside this I have a list as well which has values 40, 50 and 60. So this is my tuple when I print A, my tuple looks like this. So the first three elements in the tuple are 10, 20 and 30 and then the fourth element is basically an object which is a list. Now what I'll do is I'll try to reassign the values inside the tuple. So I'll go to the third index which is the list and inside the list I want to change the value that is 50 to let's say 55. So I'll just specify one over here and I'll write 55 and now when I print this as you can see I have actually changed the value inside the list guys. Now let me try to do this uh, with other elements. So let's try to change 30 to 35 let's say. So I'll specify the index number 2. Let's say I'll write 35. I'm getting a type error which says tuple object does not support item assignment. So it's basically a way around this error that we will get like the type error if you are trying to change a item inside a tuple. But for these objects, the nested Python objects, you can actually reassign the values very easily. Now let's take a look at the next topic that we have, which is concatenating two tuples. So it might sound a little overwhelming, but joining two tuples is a very easy task. So you just have to assign the addition of the two tuples to another variable and it will return the concatenated tuple with the values of both tuples. So let's say you have a tuple with the variable A and then you have another variable B with another tuple. So what you'll do is you will just uh, assign one more variable. Let's just say C and inside this you can do the addition of both A and B and you'll get the resultant as a concatenated tuple. So I'll take it up to Jupyter Notebook and I'll show you how you can do this. Okay, we already have A and B. So I'll just take one C variable and inside this I'll just do A plus B. No errors and I'll try to print C now. As you can see, I have both A and B inside one tuple. So I have actually concatenated both the tuples inside one tuple. So this is how concatenation works with tuples guys. So now let's take a look at the next topic that we have, which is deleting a tuple. So being an immutable data type, a tuple in Python does not allow any changes and you cannot even remove an element from tuple after the declaration. But there is a keyword which is DEL and which will delete the whole tuple altogether. So I'll just show you guys. So we have a tuple C over here, which is the concatenated tuple. So I'll try to delete this. I'll just write del C, no errors. Now when I try to print C over here, it's not there because we have deleted the whole tuple over here. So this is how deletion works with the tuple guys. You cannot delete just one element from a tuple. Instead, you can delete the whole tuple altogether. So let's just go to the next topic, which is tuple methods. So there are not many methods like list or you know other data types that we have in Python. There are basically a count method and an index method. So count basically returns the count of the items and index will return the index of the item specified. So let me show you this with an example. So let's just say I have a tuple named A and inside this I have values. Let's just say one 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 one. I have written five ones over here because we can have duplicate items inside a tuple. And let's just say two, three, four, and five. No errors. Now, when I print my eight here, I have this tuple. Now, to show you how you can use these methods, you just write a dot count, and inside this, I'll just write one, and it will return the number of times one has been written inside the tuple, which is six. Similarly, the next method that we have is index. So, to check the index value at a particular element, I'll just write 5 over here and it will return the value of the index at that particular element. But what if there is a duplicate member? So I'll just write a or index. I already know that one is written multiple times inside the tuple. I'll just write one over here. So it's going to return 0 because it will return the index value of the first item that is being encountered. Even though 
we have the count as six for uh, the element one it will give the index value as zero only so this is all about the tuple methods let's take a look at the next topic that we have which is list versus tuple so i'll give you a few different points so first of all a list is used for homogeneous data types and a tuple is generally used for heterogeneous data types a list is mutable in nature and tuple is actually immutable in nature which helps in faster iteration as well so tuple is basically faster when it comes to iteration like you're working on for loops or any other loops for iteration statements so if you are using any iteration statements tuple is much faster than a list and a list does not have any immutable elements but immutable elements can be used as a key for a dictionary while we are using a tuple last but not the least we have no guarantee that the data is right protected inside a list but if you are using a tuple implementing a tuple with data that does not change guarantees that it is right protected so these are a few basic differences between list and tuple so let's take a look at the next topic that we have which is the tuple constructor it is possible to create a tuple using a tuple constructor as well i have shown you the two different approaches you can follow to create a tuple but there is a tuple constructor which we can use to actually create a tuple so let's take it up to jupyter notebook again i'll show you how you can use the tuple constructor okay let's just say we have a list guys and i have these values 1 2 3 so this is my list and when i print my list over here i have the values 1 2 and 3 so using this tuple constructor i can actually change the list into a tuple guys so when i run this no errors now when i print b over here it will have all the elements inside the list but this time it's a tuple so we can actually use a tuple constructor to change a data type for type casting and it can be used to create a tuple as well so this is all about tuple constructor let's take a look at the next topic which is a few other examples so i'll be showing you two examples which is iterating through a tuple and a membership test on a tuple so let's take it up to jupyter notebook first of all i'll iterate through a tuple so let's just say i have a tuple guys with a value until 9 and let's say for i in a print i so this is how you can iterate through a tuple using a for loop or you can use any other loop as well and this is a very basic example let's take a look at the next uh, example which is a membership test so for the membership test you can use the membership operator which is in and in python we can check whether an element is present in a tuple or not so the following example is going to show you how you can check if an element is present in a tuple or not so we'll use this uh, a only so let me just try to print this a okay we have the same tuple i'll just print it basically so i'll check 9 in a which is true and i'll just try to check if 10 in a which is false and i'll check if a string in a and i forgot to tell you guys it's not necessary that you have to use the integers only you can use the string or any other data type inside a tuple like we have used the list data type as well so now that we have come to the end of the session i hope you guys are clear with the concept discussed in this session and don't forget to subscribe to edureka for more exciting tutorials and press the bell icon to get the latest updates from edureka Thank you.